Hey guys, my name is Tim Schmoyer and welcome to another Youth Questions video where every week we answer a real question from a real teen about real life. And this week is no exception. This week is a really good question. As always, all your questions are really good. And by the way, if you have a question for us you'd like us to answer in an upcoming video, the link for that is below. This week's question comes from a teen who asks, I can't sleep properly or eat and I'm always upset and just wanting to die. What can I do? That's a really good question, and I tapped the shoulder of a good friend of mine, a youth worker in New York, her name is Patty, and she's been working with teenagers for over 23 years now, and a lot of them with this kind of eating and sleeping and suicidal type of depression and stuff going on. So we did a Skype call video, and this is a couple snippets from our conversation kind of put together, and hopefully some of her advice will help you. Hey Patty, how you doing? Hi Tim, how are you today? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> Uh, the question, uh, just to refresh your memory real quick, is from uh, a student and who submitted a question. It says, hey Tim, I have a question for you. I can't sleep properly or eat, and I'm always upset and wanting to die. What can I do? I know you've Eat. worked with kids like that um, before in huh. your experience, so what advice would you have for this this teenager? Well, first, my, qu my first question response would be a question back and I can't do that in this medium. So right. um, what I would want to tell you is that that's a really huge important question in life. What to what to do when we're upset. Yeah. Um, what to do when things just aren't going our way and, and how to find help for that. Um, the first thing I would say is that not sleeping and not eating properly. Um, those are common signs of being depressed. And so if you think that you're depressed, um, one of the most important things that you can do is to find someone in real life to talk to. Um, someone that you trust, an adult. Um, Why I real life? I mean, because a lot of these kids have like re virtual friends, you know, like maybe like me and you and some of your experiences as well. Why, what's the importance for the real life element? Well, the real life element means that you have body language um, and someone there who can um, can f help you to kind of talk through the issues in real time. When we're online, um, even if it's something like um, you know Facebook messaging or, or texting, we're not getting the important part of communication, which is you can see me leaning towards you and you yeah. can see me watching your eyes and right. um, responding to what you say and that some things might hit me more seriously than they hit you. Yeah. And that's actually um, part of the, the issue with this with this question. It's an important question, um, but the context of the question is hugely important too. Right, which we don't have, so yeah. So just going on the, the, the things that are part of the question that was asked, you can't sleep properly and you can't eat and you're always upset and you're wanting to die, that's a big set of stuff. And that's yeah. why I would say, <laughs> Um, can, you know, talking to somebody in real life that you trust to give you honest feedback about what's going on in your life. Um, you know, I might guess from that that um, there's just things that aren't going the way that you would hope they're going in your life. There might be something happening to you that's making you sad. There could be issues with friends. There could be issues with your family. And um, all of these things are, are just so tied to how we're feeling. Mm -hmm. And it's important, I would tell you, that it's hugely important to remember that feelings are temporary. Even yeah. if you feel the same way for a long time, um, they, they're they very much tied to circumstances and circumstances can change. And so the first thing I would ask you is um, what can you do to change your circumstances when you're um, when you're feeling like you can't sleep and you're up in the middle of the night maybe, what are you doing with that time? Mm -hmm. um, are you hopping on the internet? Are you listening to your music? Um, are you watching a movie? Um, or are you doing the things that you can do to calm your mind and to, to calm your soul, which you know, you're know you disturbed? What can you do to, um, to, to center yourself and to calm down? Are there any recommendations for kids you worked with in the past who, like, uh, for how to help them get their minds off of the circumstances and the things they're stressing about and the depressed about and focus on other things? 
Well, one of the things that um, that I do, I, I'm a Christian, so I pray when yeah, I'm upset. Me too. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll talk to God. Well, I know that everybody watching may not right. be. Yeah. So it's, um, it's important to, to note that. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm upset about something, I take some time, um, even if it's the middle of the night or the middle of the day, and I just take a few minutes away from the thing that's bothering me. I found that if I jump on the internet, I usually find something else to be upset about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, or very true and don't deal with the problem uh -huh. um, it's so easy on the web to get distracted and and yeah. not really uh, end up dealing with the, the feelings that I'm having that need to be dealt with yeah. and so the more yeah. I push those feelings down the worse they get so I try to, to focus um, until I get calm and then think through the problem in yeah. a different way yeah I think the thing that you said about circumstances being temporary is so true because it never feels that way like when you're in the middle of it and it feels like um, like it's never going to end like there's no foreseeable ending like in sight in, in the future I just feel like this is going to be a perpetual ongoing situation or circumstance but like you said that's not the case um, things do go away things can get better and the thing about when you feel like you want to die that's a very permanent solution. And it's a perfect solution to a temporary problem. Right. Even though it doesn't it, feel temporary, I mean, right. those of us who have been through this and on the other side can look back and see that it that it was. Right. In talking with some of my other uh, young friends, I've talked about it as a, a horrible scrape on your knee. Mm -hmm. You know, remember when you were a little kid and you would fall and you'd get this horrible, icky scrape on your knee. I've got some and scars it, on my knees from falling. It would, <laughs> Sting so badly, yeah. and it was horrible. And you'd sit there, and um, probably you didn't cry, Tim, but a oh, lot I did. of I did. when <laughs> we get a horrible scrape on our knee, we'd cry, and um, maybe we'd be afraid because we tore our jeans, or you know, there's lots of emotions that go mm -hmm. along with that scrape on the knee. And then while it's healing, it's hard to move your knee because that scab is there, and, mm -hmm. and it's just icky, and maybe it feels worse for a while, but then after time. That healing progresses, and um, the, the the other things that were upsetting about it, you know, like we tore our jeans or our knee really hurt, we couldn't walk well, or it was bothering our sleep. Those things start to fade, and mm -hmm. they start to go away. And healing takes time. So talk about it with someone in real life. Um, yes. Pray, read your Bible if you're a Christian, um, and uh, anything else. If it's not getting better. If it goes on, especially the not sleeping and not eating um, part of things here, if, if it's going on for more than a couple of days, I, I really want to encourage you to um, to maybe talk to your doctor yeah. or a, another adult um, that you can trust, a school counselor, your pastor, um, somebody who can help you to find some help um, about your health. Right. In general. A common fear that I know you know the kids have, but someone who's watching this, the, the common excuse going through their head is, um, but if I tell someone, they're going to freak out and uh, they're going to jump to the ex extremes. Like we got a comment on our one of our youth questions videos that we did about cutting and uh, that they actually went and told an adult, but that adult freaked out and they sent them to a psych ward. And all they did was give them medication and now they're back and things are worse than they were before, except for now they've got drugs they're supposed to take and they feel humiliated, you know? So right. that's a common fear. And I know you emphasize the trust part. Um, right, a trusted adult um, is someone perhaps you've talked to about some personal stuff before. Mm -hmm. um, and someone who you know uh, well and kind of can, can gauge their reactions. Honestly, I'm not sleeping and I'm not really hungry. Those are, are pretty common problems among teenagers. You know, um, when you when we get upset and you're looking for uh, solutions to problems, we forget um, to take care of ourselves. Freaking out might happen. It might when you tell somebody. Uh, Especially but, people who aren't familiar with, you know, cutting and eating disorders and right that kind of stuff. Right. And that's why I emphasize somebody like a school counselor. Um, or your, your youth pastor or, you know, a trusted adult, maybe an older sibling, an aunt, an uncle, um, somebody that um, is a little less emotionally involved yeah. and can give you some, um, some guidance on whether or not you need to seek some deeper help for that. Right. I mean, maybe you do need um, some medication yeah. and, and some intervention and there's nothing wrong with that if that's right. what you need. Cool. Well, thank you, Patty. Appreciate your help and your advice and wisdom on this. 
I really hope that's helpful for you and any of you guys who are watching this and you have advice for this person or suggestions or anything or even a story to share from your own life, please leave that as a comment below this video on YouTube. I'm sure that'll be really encouraging and helpful for people who are kind of going through this, this kind of thing. If you're not already subscribed to us, make sure you click that subscribe button above this video on YouTube. That way each time we release a new video each week, you will get a notification of that in your subscription box here on YouTube. Also, if you are a teenager and you have a question that you'd like us to answer in an upcoming video one week, there's a link in the description below this video on YouTube where you can anonymously submit your own question about life, relationships, dating, parents, siblings, whatever you're going through, and me and about 40 other youth workers, we all collaborate around your questions and do our best to answer them for you in an upcoming video. So make sure you check that out. You'll find links down there for us on Facebook and Twitter as well, where you can connect with us and engage throughout the week. That'd be awesome. And we will see you guys again next week for another Youth Questions video. Bye. The sun is so bright. Oh, it's hot. I'm gonna get sunburned.